In other American cities, Columbus is controversial this year, but in Columbus, Ohio, they've spent 10 years making plans to honor their city's namesake. On the waterfront, there's a brand new, full-size replica of the Santa Maria. But Columbus is most proud of Ameriflora 92. $95 million has transformed Franklin Park into a garden showcase for a half million flowers. Three separate plantings mean a riot of color now through October. The Ameriflora people are very anxious to get the word out that this is more than just a flower show. They compare it to sort of a mini World's Fair. Well, it's not as ambitious as a World's Fair. But in some respects, it's just as large. At 88 acres, Ameriflora is bigger than Knoxville's World's Fair, as large as Disneyland. To see it all, smart visitors ride the free tram. Designers also made sure everything here is wheelchair accessible. Like a World's Fair, there are displays and gardens set up by 21 nations and dozens of American companies. And over the next five months, there'll be more than 50,000 entertainers. Plenty to keep the kids occupied, too, including a century-old carousel and a giant sandbox where they can dig up a dinosaur that's reburied each night. <laughs> Ameriflora ends on Columbus Day, October 12th. The goal is six million visitors, and I hope they succeed. It's America's biggest quincentennial celebration, a chance to sample a World's Fair atmosphere without traveling all the way to Spain. In Columbus, Ohio, I'm Mike Sanford. I'm Mike Sanford. It's one of the biggest celebrations in the U.S. this summer. Coming up, we'll take you to the Ameriflora in Columbus, Ohio. German Village is truly a village. It just happens to be in a big city, but we are truly a small town. Fred Holdridge admits he's not even German, but he is president of Columbus's German Village Society, which means he loves strolling the streets, showing off his domain. The red brick streets, the red brick houses, the red brick sidewalks, the limestone, the wrought iron, the smallness of the homes, the charm is the main thing. It, it reeks of old. Old means 1814. That's when German immigrants first settled this part of Columbus, many to work in the town's seven local breweries. For years, German village thrived, but Prohibition, the Depression, and two world wars took their toll. The whole area was scheduled for demolition in the 1950s, but a few dedicated locals helped save and restore the neighborhood. Today, it's a national historic district and a big draw for tourists. You know, some first-time visitors to German Village are surprised to find it's not like a Disneyland. There are no entrance gates, no admission fees, no big souvenir stores. What you find here is a living, working neighborhood. Fortunately, most of the people living here are more than happy to show it off to tourists. The Society's even printed a $5 Brick Ticks, a walking tour book loaded with maps and history. Take a walk. That's what we tell them. Get a feeling of the village, and that's the only way you can do it. You can't get it by driving in the car. After your walk, stop by a 106-year-old Schmidt's German restaurant for Bratwurst, or check out one of the brew pubs that are revitalizing the nearby brewery district. German Village, an unexpected slice of history tucked inside a big city. In Columbus, Ohio, I'm Mike Sanford. I'm Mike Sanford. It's one of America's most beautifully restored ethnic neighborhoods. Coming up, a walking tour of German Village in Columbus, Ohio. One of the oldest streets. It was formerly called New Street. New Street. N-E-W. But uh, changed the name to City.